Hi, my name is Alex and I work as a senior designer with Zaha Hadid Architects and welcome to this introduction video to Lab Academy's new advanced Maya class, which is focusing on n particles. The goal of the class is to introduce the n particle system within Maya and to kind of explain how to set up an n particle cloud as well as how to control it and finally how to output meshes that are 3D printable. So let's dive into what we will actually be working with in the class itself. While Maya is mostly used for modeling in architectural circles, it also has a highly developed physics solver contained in the section of the package known as N-Dynamics. This powerful physics engine is used to run simulations that enable users to achieve believable material behavior in Maya's digital environment. Among the subcategories available, we can find N-cloth, N-hair fluids, and finally N-particles, which will be the focus of this class. So what is an N-particle cloud anyway? An n-particle cloud is a computational stand-in for what could be considered an interaction model between objects that are belonging to the same population, which collide with one another in order to create complex output patterns and interactions between them. In a very simple example, uh, a good example within the physical world would be as if you were imagining um, a container filled with small spheres or marbles which are colliding with one another moving around and are being governed by external forces as well as their own collision collision forces that they're trying to resolve so in essence what we're seeing in, in a computational model is uh, that a particle is a point representation of a force that also takes into account other external forces which can be exerted onto the particle cloud in the scene where the particle cloud would uh, will adjust accordingly trying to follow and fight the forces that are being exerted on top of it. In general, in a very broad sense, particles are used in many different industries, and you can even see that in certain plugins for Maya, you can see that the particles are used for medical modeling. So you might be seeing visual representations of DNA chains or of other molecular structures that may, might be related to the uh, biochemical industry which usually is used uh, as a way to sort of visualize this information uh, in a way that can also be processed by the experts in the field. So this was already somehow inbuilt into, the, into, Maya's, uh, into Maya's physics engine and also was developed by other uh, artists and VFX um, specialists that were kind of narrowly focusing on the areas such as, let's say, the medical industry. Architecturally, the use of particles is somewhat of a novelty. It's appearing maybe um, late, lately more so than before. Uh, and in general, the use of particles is centered on the idea of creating isosurfaces around particle clouds or scanning particle clouds that come from photogrammetry or other ways of scanning the environment and turning that data into point data which can be processed. Particle clouds within Maya, while, can, while can, they can actually retain some of the functionalities of the particle clouds that we encounter in other software, also carry with them a lot of other um, functionalities that relate to interaction and custom attributes that can be applied to each particle, which also affect the behavior of the particles. Uh, in general, what we're looking at here is kind of a way to move from a physics-based uh, environment and an interaction model into a model that can be frozen in time, which means that the uh, final output of the particles will be a geometry which is built around the cloud with regards to the positions of the particles themselves at, in any point in time. Uh, and that geometry that is output can be usually very easily migrated between different platforms because it becomes embedded into a mesh, either by instancing objects on top of the particles that already exist in the scene or creating isosurfaces or custom meshes around the particles based on the uh, attributes around uh, mesh creation towards the output. The way in which a particle can be generated inside of a Maya environment is either by emission or by input through text field or sketching. The emission type uh, distribution of particle clouds inside of Maya is usually instrumentalized by the use of an emitter which can either be a surface or an object uh, in, located in space described by a certain volume, which basically just denotes the area in which the particle will appear at a certain uh, rate that can be defined by the user. Because this is a time-based model, obviously over time more particles will populate the scene if a emitter is chosen, 
and we can cap and limit the amount of particles that can enter the scene by inputting that information into the attribute editor of the cloud. Another uh, way to, to do so is also to input particles as a grid. They can respond to a grid that we create within our scene, which means that the population of the particles at any given time is always constant, and there are no additional particles being in, emitted into the scene. Another way to do this is also by emitting it from other objects and inheriting certain characteristics of the objects themselves, depending on which part of the object the particle is deriving from. So in a way, we can also use polygonal objects as basis for the emission of particles, which also enables us to kind of set up particles in uh, pre-existing shapes based on the underlying geometry that we're using as an emitter. In this way, we are populating our scene with particles and creating the, um, our initial cloud. And by initializing the cloud, we're creating the final population of particles that we're going to exert forces on. In the second segment of our class, we will be looking into how particles uh, can be controlled within this environment or influenced. Because these are very volatile systems, they can be controlled by different means within the my environment. And one of the most obvious and the most available means is by using fields. The available fields within Maya are basically uh, preset vector fields uh, that respond to a certain uh, real world force or uh, an effect that we can uh, observe. So in this way, the field becomes an environmental force that is exerted onto the particles, which can be a wind or a vortex force or a Newton field or a unary force, which is sim simply applying the force of particles in one simple direction. Uh, these fields usually present themselves as the uh, lowest form of control within the particle system because they kind of subjugate the particles to whatever external effect that we're observing by using uh, the field itself. The second way of controlling the particles is by also varying their internal attributes, meaning that their own size and their own properties might actually relate to how they interact with one another and the rest of the objects in the scene. As particles are part of the end dynamics package, they will also interact with other end dynamic objects like end hairs or end clots. These active dynamic objects will also interact with the particles, which means that there will be a possibility of collision between them and accordingly the change of direction or change of behavior after that collision is made. So another way in which we can control the particles is also by containing them in other dynamics objects or passive colliders, which limits the, uh, the area of their effect, but also kind of traps them in a way that can be described in, in more easy ways. Uh, in this way, we can fill other objects with particles and define their inner structure by defining the properties of the cloud itself. The last segment of the class will relate to output, and the output part of the class will be concerned with how a particle cloud can be turned in from one information-based system, which what and particles actually uh, are in Maya, to a representation that can be easily migrated between different platforms and reused in other software, as well as evaluated in a more visual level. This usually in uh, the um, example of particles relates to converting the particle itself on into a mesh. And these meshes that uh, originate from particles either come from the fact that we can replace each um, with an instance, which means that we can model geometries that we can add to the cloud at will. And how we add them and array them on top of our cloud can also be dependent on the internal attributes of the particles themselves. The other option is to bake the particles directly into a mesh, which is defined by certain properties within the particle cloud itself, which relate to the resolution and the quality of the output mesh. But it basically means that around the particle at certain radius that corresponds to the size of the particle itself, we will be creating an isosurface that will uh, envelop the, the cloud and actually create a mesh around it, which becomes a physical representation of the cloud uh, as it is visualized in Maya. A small segment of this uh, stage of the class will also be committed to how the particles can be visualized natively within Maya's environment with the use of the Arnold renderer as uh, the engine of choice. And we will simply look into how certain properties of the particles can be used to drive 
the visualization of, of them in within Maya's environment and seeing how we can exploit certain properties of particles as well as different profiles in which they can be displayed as a way to optimize rendering times but also achieve the highest quality results that we can. Uh, and we'll also be looking into how to set up a proper render sequence that can uh, output frames for us which we can stitch together afterwards in appropriate Adobe software like Premiere Pro or After Effects. With these three stages completed, we will actually cover the entire workflow for the particle system from creation to output and embedding the particle into a mesh object. Hopefully after the class is finished, you will be able to conceptually on a deeper level understand the conceptual framework behind the particle system within Maya and how it works. And also to see that um, since it is a very abstract system, it is also obviously applicable to many different uh, problems that you might encounter in, in design or uh, in ways that you can visualize or, visualize or represent data in general. Uh, since it's, it is a very abstract system, it's kind of very uh, pliant and very likely uh, for you to be used in many different ways. Uh, so the class basically aims into introducing the, the particle system in a broad way by showing a wide variety of functionalities within the particle system as an attempt to sort of create a well-rounded base for you to move on to more specific things afterwards because we will be delving into stuff that also deals with some light scripting with uh, the MEL language you will also see uh, how the capabilities of particles are further um, released once you actually start getting under the hood of Maya and seeing a little bit into the coding side of how a particle uh, system is set up. I hope you've enjoyed this brief inter introduction into the class um, and that you will consider joining me uh, in a live session that is going to follow uh, and I hope this kind of informs you into the kind of uh, approaches that you can take within Maya's environment beyond the poly modeling package that is indeed very powerful but then also looking into something that's more um, connected to the dynamics engine which indeed uh, serves its own uh, very large purpose within the package and kind of offers a lot of exciting opportunities. So thank you and hope to see you soon in Live Academy's uh, Advanced Maya class.